Hi everybody, welcome back to Sharon's Hot Tip. As you can see, I've got a smorgasbord of different things. Now, these are things that I get asked a lot is, what's the difference between a hair dryer, a heat gun, blow torch, a compressor and a straw? They're all different ways of moving your fluid art around. Now, depending on the effects or the medium, you may have a different preference. For example, if you want a small controlled area, you'd use your straw. However, if you're using resin, you don't want to inhale resin when you're blowing. So you need to move away and blow. And you would get a controlled small effect. Now, I would only use that for small areas, making sure I'm not breathing in my resin, but blowing it out. And because it's your uh, breath temperature, you'll get some movement, but you can create bubbles. My preference are these two. Now, this one I use is Track to Life heat gun, and that can go quite high. So this is the one that I use. I really like it because you can control speed, temperature, you can have a burst. You get lots of different attachments. I tend to use it just at this. You can see where my resin is caught on there. Not ideal. But you've got all different attachments, so you can give it a different burst. Now, when you use this, it's going to heat it up dramatically, which means you're going to have more fluidity, but it also means that your resin is going to cure easily. Now, things I take into consideration is if I'm dirty, like you can see here, and I'm wearing gloves still, I can still press over my um, resin on here. So I have resined up so many tools, it stopped working. So ideally, put something around it, to prevent the amount of resin you're putting in here so your buttons will still move freely but i do like this because i've got it set to one and then I've set it to high and i control it that way um it gets very hot at the end but the good thing is you can stand it on your work area like that because that takes some time to reduce so i use that for blending colors but also for creating waves in short sharp bursts and to heat up my fluid to get more movement this was a beautiful just gold like from James Bond um, a torch see it comes out and um, if you're using this for resin you have to make sure that it's not directly hitting your resin because you could cause dimplings in there or burn your pigments and discolor your resin and worst case scenario set it afire so you are supposed to have fire extinguishers or other fire extinguishing means um, now this one you fill up with your butane gas and you can select a heat, at, uh, or should I say flame at the end. The idea being with this, you use the heat gently over your resin or fluid art, and that should be enough to remove bubbles. The good thing with that is it's not going to heat your resin up too much. You're not going to move your pigments or blend your pigments, but you're going to get a more direct approach. If you don't remove your bubbles, they will come out of your resin over time and could create little craters in there. So I use this for bubbles and small areas that I might want to give a little bit of heat. I use this for blending and movement. You can use your hairdryer. I've used that as some of my earlier pieces. I had my little attachments. That will give you a blending motion, but you can have it on cool heat, and then that will help. It will give you a more uncontrolled approach. Now, some people like that for when they're creating ripples or even if they're creating waves. So it all becomes a personal choice as to what feels well for you. And as you're an artist or getting used to different mediums, you'll work out what's the best for you. I've not used this much in resin. I use it mainly for my fluid art, uh, should I say alcohol inks, but I am going to start using this in resin because I want small controlled bursts. So I'm not going to be using my straw, hence not breathing in any toxic fumes but I'm not gonna get any heat with this. So it's important that I only use this when the resin is very runny uh, and hopefully get desired effect. The great thing with this is you can hold it down or you can just tap it and you can take change the amount of air coming out of it. So these are the four tools I mainly use in my art. Again, it's all gonna come down to personal preference. You're all gonna have something that works best for you. You're all gonna have brands that work best with you. Fluid art can be expensive, so if you've just got a hairdryer around home, use it and eventually you'll work out how to get the best effects for you. With such as this, you, you may have one around home, which is how you like your barbecues, uh, anything. But have a go, give them a practice, you'll get used to your own tools and have some fun. Anyway, 
This is Sharon's Hot Tip. I hope you found this video useful. Remember, thumbs up, subscribe, share, comments are always welcome. Make sure you come back and see me each week for another Sharon's Hot Tip. And if there's anything you would like me to share with the viewers, a hot tip of yourself, make sure that you share that with me and I'd be happy to pass on that information. But I'll see you on the next video. Have an amazing week and remember to be creative. Ciao, ciao.